Good morning. Today we are going to continue looking at the moment distribution method. Uh, last two lectures we looked at the moment distribution method, its basis and uh, how you use it to solve beam problems. Okay? We solved quite a few. I hope you have been able to solve the beam problem that I had given at the end of the last lecture. Okay. It is a fairly simple problem and I hope you have been able to do it. Today we are going to be looking at moment distribution for frames. Now, in moment distribution for frames, you essentially have two kinds of cases, frames without sway and two frames with sway. Okay. We will see that frames without sway are identical to the method for beams. Okay? And for this we will develop procedures. Okay? So, essentially uh, we understand that in frames you have two kinds of situations. One that of frames where sway is allowed. The sway implies essentially where displacement degrees of freedom exist. Okay. Sway is almost always uh, since we neglect actual rigidity, sway is almost always associated with uh, displacement degrees of freedom. And uh, frames without sway are frames in which only have rotational degrees of freedom uh, available in them. Okay. So, now before I start working on it, I just want to show a couple of things uh, that is essential. Uh, one is that uh, there are some bookkeeping issues when we are doing moment distribution for frames. Okay. Uh, in other words, you know in beams they were all aligned along one direction and therefore, uh, when they were aligned along one direction, uh, you could just do the moment distribution in a table form and uh, get away with it. When you have a frame, you know you have a situation, let us take a typical frame. Okay, let me just draw a typical frame. Right Now, if you have a frame, now the point is that you have in a beam, you at most have two members meeting at a joint and therefore, uh, putting it together, uh, we did it in a tabular form. In uh, the frames, you see you have these two joints where you have four members meeting. Now, when you have four members meeting, it becomes very difficult to uh, essentially state uh, how to put it in a tabular form. So, that is the reason why I am just going to go ahead and look at a situation uh, where uh, how to essentially do the moment distribution, not so much the, the mechanics of the moment distribution, but more the bookkeeping uh, aspects of uh, doing a moment distribution. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, let us look at some of the things. Uh, the way uh, we put is if you have a beam, a horizontal member, okay, the way it is done is that say this is i j, this is i and this is j. So, what we write is, we write the distribution factors as d i j 
and DJI and we drew all the processes in this manner. They start from here, so here you have FEMJI and you do the distribution carryover in this manner and over here. If you have a, a vertical member, a column, the way you do it is this way. This one, let's say this is I and this is J. Then you have DIJ here, J here, DJI here, fixed in moment IJ and fixed in moment JI and you proceed upwards in this direction and here you proceed downwards in this direction. Okay? So this is the way. So therefore, if you look at a situation where we had all four members meeting, let's say this is joint I, okay, so this is joint I, and here I have uh, joint J, here I have joint K, L, M, okay, so then D, I, J would be here, Okay. The IK would be here. Okay. The IM would be here. And the IL would be here. You see, if you follow this notation, you'll see that this is exactly, this is the bottom node for IK, so it comes on this side for the column. Uh, it's the right node for IJ, so therefore it comes over here. It's the left node for IL, so therefore it comes over here. And it's the top node for IM, so it comes over here. And this way you have FEM IJ going up this way. You have FEM IK going up this way. You have FEM I L going down this way and you have F E M I M going down this way. Okay, so this is the uh, bookkeeping notation and then at this joint if you look at it you'll have I J and then over here you'll have I K and you will have here M I L and over here you will have M I M. Okay? And if you look at this, the equation at this point will be M I J plus M I K plus M I L plus M I M equal to zero. And the distribution happens also in this manner. And of course, it goes without saying that Dij plus Dik plus Dil plus Dim equal to 1 by definition. Okay? So, therefore, it is very important to understand that if we follow this procedure in a frame, you actually do the moment distribution in a exploded uh, this thing of the frame. Okay? So now let's quickly look at a couple of uh, problems uh, so that we appreciate uh, what it is that goes into the uh, thing. So let me first write down the make the problem statement. Problem statement is this. Twenty meters 
30 meters 30 meters 30 meters over here I have a 10 kilonewton force acting at the center point so that is 10 meters from the bottom on this I have 10 kilonewton acting at 10 meters and on this I have a loading 1.2 kilonewton kilonewton per meter okay mm, this is a this is b this is c d e f okay so this is the problem now let us first see it's very important to understand uh, as to how many degrees of freedom does this structure have so you know to figure out whether you have a frame with sway or without sway you really have to go back and look at the number of degrees of freedom that you have okay so let us go how many do we have we have six joints so I have three into six 18 is the unconstrained the number of unconstrained degrees of freedom is 18 now let's look at the number of restraints I have 2 here, 3 here, 3 here, so 2 plus 3 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 1, 9. So restraints is 9 and constraints is 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, 5. Okay, so we have essentially 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 actual rigidity. So if you look at it, it's a four degree of freedom uh, structure. What are the four degrees of freedom? One rotation here, second rotation here, third rotation here, fourth rotation here. Okay? And therefore, this is, since it only has rotational degrees of freedom, this is a frame without sway. Okay, this is because it is, it only has rotational degrees of freedom associated with it. So it is a frame without sway. So we are going to be solving this problem as a frame without sway. Now first and foremost, before I start solving the problem, I need to first write down what the fixed end moments are. And let us look at the fixed end moments. Okay. So if you look, look at the fixed end moments, you're going to have fixed end moment at AB and fixed end moment at BA are going to be equal to 0 because there is no loading between uh, AB. Okay? Now fixed end moment at BC is equal to uh, how do we go about it? It's going to be equal to 10, that is the load, into AB squared. So it's going to be 10 into 20 squared upon 30 squared. Okay. So if you look at this, this turns out to be 44.4 kilonewton meter. Fixed end moment at CB is equal to minus 10 into 20 into 10 squared upon 30 squared and that is equal to minus 22.2 kilonewton meter. Okay, next uh, let's look at fixed end moment at CD. This is equal to uh, 1.2 into 30 squared upon 12 and this turns out to be equal to 90.0 kilonewton meter and fixed 10 moment at DC is negative 
uh, into 30 squared upon 12 so it's equal to minus 90 kilonewton meter uh, finally BE so fix 10 moment BE is going to be equal to mm, plus 10 into 20 by 8 which is equal to uh, 200 upon 8 is 25 kilonewton meter and fixed end moment at EB is equal to minus 25 kilonewton per meter and finally fixed end moments at CF is equal to fixed end moment at FC which is equal to 0. So, we have computed all the fixed end moments. What is the next step? Next step is to compute all distribution factors. Okay? Now, we are going to be using all modified uh, members that we can use. Okay? Note that AB since A is a hinge, AB is a modified member and therefore, we have K a B modified is equal to 3. By the way, all the I's are the same. Okay? So, uh, yeah, all the I's are the same. So, you have, uh, what am I doing? Yeah, 3 fourths I upon 30, which is equal to I upon forty. Okay. Now K B C is not a modified member, so it is equal to I upon thirty. Okay. Then we have K. Uh, C D. K C D is modified since D is so it is going to be 3 fourths into I upon 30 which is equal to I upon 40. Finally, we have K B E which is a normal member I upon 20. Okay, and K E F okay is equal to mm, EF is equal to I upon 20. But, uh, you know, this, so these are the stiffnesses for each member. Note that the modified AB essentially uh, happens that this essentially comes at B. On A, it is 0. Okay. So, therefore, if we look at uh, B at the joint B, let us look at joint B. Okay. Joint B, you have B A which has I upon 40, okay. B C which is I upon 30 and you have uh, B E which is I upon 20. So, what is the summation of the stiffnesses? Summation of stiffness is equal to I upon 40 plus I upon 30 plus I upon 20. And if we look at this, this becomes over 120. This becomes 3I plus 4I plus 6I which becomes 13 i by 120. So, therefore, distribution factor for B A is equal to i upon 40 divided by 13 i upon 120 and this becomes 
थ्री अपॉन थर्टीन ओके सो डी बी सी इज इक्वल टू बी सी इज इक्वल टू आई अपॉन थर्टी सो दिस बिकम्स फोर ओवर थर्टीन एंड डी बी ई इज इक्वल टू सिक्स अपॉन थर्टीन ओके सो दीज आर माई डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फैक्टर्स एट जॉइंट बी ओके सो नाउ I have another joint which is C, where I have multiple members. Every other joint, look at joint A. It is a uh, joint A is a hinge. Joint D is a hinge. So therefore, there are no uh, computations at that particular point, excepting for that one uh, thing that you have, which is just to put it together. And uh, joint E and F. are fixed ends so at fixed ends you only get uh, moments coming in you do not have any moments going out and therefore only b and c are the joints at which you have to consider uh, the effects and so if you look at it joint c at joint c the summation is identical and it turns out to be 13i upon 120 so therefore dcb is equal to 4 upon 13 dcd is equal to 3 upon 13 and dcf is equal to 6 upon 13 so these are the distribution factors let's write down what the carryover factor uh, carryover factors are carryover factor of a to b is half only for the first situation carryover factor from b to a is zero carryover factor from b to c is equal to c to b half carry over factor from c to d is zero carry over factor from d to c is half only for the first uh when the fixed end moment is distributed okay then we have carry over factor from b to e is half e to b zero c to f half f to c zero so these are the carry over factors that we have we have the distribution factors so now let us write down look at the uh, the problem okay so if we look at that problem what do we get uh, if you look at it uh, a 3 over uh, 13 uh, will uh, just let me put it down uh, 3 over 13 is 0.2 31 over 13 is 0.307 and 6 over 13 is 0.462 okay uh, similarly uh, for these so ultimately if we look at it let us now finally look at the the structure okay so if we look at the structure it will look like this let me draw it in a slightly bigger sense note that here we and anything this is what is this part this is actually dba 
and DBA is equal to 0.231. This is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. Okay, and D we have here nothing. Okay, for B, E, B, F. So what do we have here? B E is going to be here. So B E is going to be equal to point four six two. For B C this is here. So B C is point three zero seven. Okay. Now here this is C B. So this is going to be 0 0.307. This is CD. Remember the, the bookkeeping. So this is 0 0.231. And this is for CF. So CF is 0 0.462. Over here I need to have it on this side. This is going to be 1.0. This is on this side. This is 1.0. So now let us put down all the moments that we have. Okay. So if you look at all the moments that we have uh, on AB, we had zero. Fixed ten moment BA was zero. What was BE? BE was equal to plus 25.0. Oh and for BC it was plus 44.4 for CB it was minus 22.2 .2. okay then for this was 0 so here also 0 here it was negative 25.0 and for CD it was plus 90 and minus 90. So I have just written down all the distribution factors and remember the carryover. Okay? There is 0 carryover here. Here there is carryover in both directions of half. Here there is 0 carryover here. Here there is half carryover and here this is half carryover. In this direction carryover is 0, in this carry direction carryover is 0 because it is a fixed end. Okay? And uh, ultimately so AB, so we have written down everything, all the carryovers. So let us start the process of looking at the um, moment distribution. We have written down all the distribution factors. Remember this is AB, this is BA, this is BE, this is BC. Just remember the way that we have done. So now what we need to do is we need to consider one of the ends where we need to. The first thing that we need to do is eliminate D. There is nothing at A so nothing to eliminate. D we need to eliminate. So the first thing that we do is plus 90 eliminate okay, and put it equal to 0 and this plus 90 will come on this side as plus 45.0. Okay? So that is the first thing that is done. Now what we start looking is once we have done that this has gone to 0, this has gone to 0, modified everything is there. Now we need to look at the two joints where we need to release, we need to release the moments. Okay? And remember we had said that we were going to do it uh, simultaneously. So all the joints that have undistributed or net moments, we are going to do the distribution in one shot and do the carryover. So what we do is we do the distribution at all joints and then do the carryover in the next phase. So distribution, the first let us look at joint B. 
there is an unbalanced moment of 69.4. So, the 69.4 needs to be balanced out in what way? We need to balance it out by taking 69.4 and putting it around and if you look at putting it around, uh, what do we have? Uh, we have um, Okay, uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, we are not going to do it simultaneously. You can do it simultaneously, but since I have solved the problem uh, using first releasing first joint C and then joint B, so let me go with that. Okay, here I have plus 90 plus 45 minus 22.2. So this needs to be distributed, and if I distribute this, I get so the net unbalanced moment is 135 minus 22.2 is minus 112.7. So, 112.7 to be distributed it becomes minus 26.1 balance. Then here when you balance you balance together. So, here you get minus 52.1 and here you get minus 34.6. So, as soon as you do the balancing, we take care uh, of uh, this is the thing. Now, next we need to do the carryover. So, here there is no carryover. Here there is a carryover. The carryover is minus 26.1. Okay. And uh, so, this is the carryover from here to here. This is the carryover from here to here will be minus 17. 0.3 and there is no carryover. So, we have done the carryover phase also. Okay? Uh, after carryover you do not uh, write down any this thing. So, it is still unbalanced, but the here there is no question of unbalanced. The next thing is the unbalanced here. So, if you look at it, it is going to be 69.4 minus 17.3 is going to be 52.2 uh, that we need to um, do. So, this turns out to be minus 16.0 minus 24.1 and minus 12.0. Now, since distribution is done, okay, we need to take care. This now the carryover phase at joint B, this is not going to carry over here. This is going to carry over here as minus 12.1. Okay. This is going to carry over here as minus 8. Okay. And that's it. We've done the carryover. So now the next step is essentially you have an unbalanced moment of minus 8 over here. So we need to balance that so it becomes plus 8 which needs to be distributed and if you distribute it plus 8 you get plus 2.5 distributed. Here we get mm, plus 3.7 distributed. Uh, then we have plus 1.8 distributed. So, as soon as we have done the distribution we come here. Okay. Now, we have the next is the carryover phase. So, this 3.7 comes over here and this becomes uh, plus 1.9. Here, there is no carryover. Here, there is a carryover which is plus 1.3. Okay. Here, there is no carryover. Now, all we are left with is this plus 1.3 which needs to be redistributed and we redistributed it becomes minus 0.4 block here. Here this will become minus 0.6 and this will become minus 0.3. This minus 0.6 uh, needs to be uh, taken here, but 0.3 remember I had said that 
uh, when you when do you stop you know you can't keep going forever uh, and I had said that as soon as you get distributed values which are less than uh, the um, which are less than your um, uh, you know one percent of your values you stop okay so now over here this comes out as minus 0.3 carry over here but you see this minus 0.4 if you carry over here it becomes 0.2 which is much less than 1 percent so I am not going to do the carry over so the carry over for all practical purposes is 0 okay and here there is no carry over now since there is 0 carry over this is balanced and we are done okay so as soon as we are done we draw a double line we draw a double line and we draw the double line here, double line here and what you do is you add up all the values that you have over here and once you have that you add them. This one if you add up turns out to be 0.3 so that is BE. If you look at this, if you add this up you get minus 37.3 four so this is the moment here add all of this up you get uh, minus uh, sorry plus 12.0 so this is the moment at B if we add this up we get minus 12.3 so this is the moment here note that if you if you add them up you'll get it equal to zero and that is how it should be here you will get minus uh, 48 point 4 this is the moment here okay this is plus 110 point 7 so this is the moment CD if you add this up you get minus 62 point 3 okay and uh, <coughs> Uh, minus 62.3 again if you do uh, the uh, addition you will see minus 62.3 minus 48.4 plus 110 is equal to 0 so this is balanced okay here uh, this turns out to be equal to minus 24.2 okay and this is a 0 so ultimately at the end let me put down what are the values that I get and if I look at it this is what I get m a b equal to 0 m b a is equal to minus 12 by 3 m b c is equal to plus 12 m c b is equal to minus 62.3 m c d is equal to plus 110.7 m d c obviously is equal to 0 then you have m b e which is equal to plus 0.3 m e b is equal to minus 37.4 m c f is equal to uh, minus 48.4 and m f c is equal to minus 24.2 ok so this is the moment distribution and since this is a frame without sway okay this is where we end okay so we've got the member end moments okay next step for drawing the bending moment diagram is what for a b twelve point three for b c it's 12.0 and minus 62.3 
and a uh, what is the 10 kilonewton force acting at 10 meters this is 30 meters this is 30 meters then we have CD CD we have 110.7 with a UDL of 1.2 kilonewton per meter okay and then we have uh, BE BE over here is equal to uh, point 0.3 and this here the load applied applied load is how much 10 so this is 10 in this direction okay then uh, EB is equal to 37.4 and then you have EF M CF is equal to clockwise 48.4 and this is clockwise 24.2 okay so these are your members and so for each member now okay you should be able to draw uh, the bending moment diagram how will the bending moment diagram for this look this will look in this way for this one it's going to be 12.3 uh, what about this one this one is going to be 12 okay and sixty two point three okay and at this particular point uh, this one is going to have uh, ten into uh, two thirds so uh, twenty by three so that's going to be two hundred so that's going to be sixty six so at this point uh, it's going so it's the moment is going to be something like this where you have there in this particular case you're going to have a moment this way which is going to go in this manner here the bending moment and so bending moment this way and over here this way this one is going to be I'm drawing always the bending moment on the tension side so this is going to be 48.3 is going to be this way so this is in this fashion okay and over here this is point so this is going to be point this is going to be 37 and this is going to be Okay, and you can compute what those are very easily. I've just drawn the bending moment diagram. Of course, you need to put it together and uh, be able to do it. Okay, so uh, in essence, what we are saying is that uh, if you have a, a frame uh, which only has rotational degrees of freedom, then you can classify that as a frame without sway and a frame without sway the entire moment distribution procedure is identical to that of beams the only difference being since a frame has both vertical and horizontal members you need to do a little bit of proper bookkeeping and remember that for a horizontal member the left end uh, you do it left end bottom and then you do right end top okay uh, then if you have a vertical member the top end you do on the left hand side and the bottom end you do on the right hand side 
and if you proceed in this manner you will find that you will not have any problem in solving uh, the moment distribution of frames without sway. Okay? So, I think you should be able to now solve all problems of frames without sway. Now, how do we tackle frames with sway? Okay? Now, in frame with sway, let us, let us take this particular same problem. And let me just change it. Okay, I mean I'm not drawing it properly. Let me just change it one width. Instead of a hinge at this point, let me put a roller here. Okay, let me put a roller here. Still at the same, you know. It's exactly the problem that we have solved, excepting for the fact that this one has a roller here rather than a hinge. How many degrees of freedom do you have? You have one less restraint, so you have five degrees of freedom. What are the five degrees of freedom? One rotation here, one rotation here, one rotation here, one rotation here and this displacement. Okay, so now you have a frame which not only has rotations, it has a sway. Now, how do I solve this particular problem? Very simple. We solve it as two problems. Okay, we solve it as two problems. The first problem we consider one, we restrict sway. Okay? So, how do we restrict sway? We do this. Okay? Now, the point that we do is, when we restrict the sway, the first thing that we do is find out what is the reaction at this point. The horizontal reaction. Why? Because in the real structure you will note that since this is a roller, the horizontal reaction at this point has to be equal to 0. Okay? So, first problem restrict sway, put loading, solve the problem. We have already done it. Then compute this. Okay? Once you compute this, okay, the second problem is with sway and what you do is, you consider the structure like this. You apply a load here and the load that you apply over here is just the opposite of this. So, when you put the two of them together, you get the original uh, structure, but in this case, you do not have any loading. You only have this. Okay? Now, the whole point comes around to the fact that, well, so what happens when we apply this load? And this is where, even in moment distribution, the kinematics of the structure under just the rotational, uh, the translational uh, sway, we need to find out how the structure actually be, uh, you know, displaces. Once we find out how the structure actually displaces, we can actually find out all the fixed end moments. We can, we can consider it Remember, we solved the support settlement problem. We solved the support settlement problem. So, in this particular case, we are going to be solving it as if it was a settlement, okay, that the support had moved. Find out how the structure moves. Find out all the fixed end moments uh, due to that movement, okay, 
and then do the moment distribution and we will see how uh, we are going to go on to solve this problem. In other words, the only thing that happens is when you have a frame with sway is that you have to do two sets of moment distribution. One of the frame with sway, in other words you are restricting the sway. So, you introduce a restraint corresponding to the degree of freedom that is the sway degree of freedom. Then compute the reaction in the restraint direction at that support okay. and then we consider another problem where we consider that load to be applied on the structure and consider the frame only with sway and without loading and ultimately that is the procedure that we are going to be using. I am going to stop over here in the next lecture I will look at the details of how to solve a problem of a frame with sway. Thank you very much.